scary. All right, you guys might not know this, but this music you're hearing was from Epcot Center's opening day ceremonies and played in that loop right in front of Spaceship Earth. Eh, it was there. I used it. Now, I wrote this. Lovely little upgrade. Little known fact, if you don't watch the credits, the original Epcot music, Butch Ross plays this in the ending credits of second season. Talented bugger. New graphics. I could never get that dulcimer to stop popping around like that. And fireworks. Nice. We slimmed things down, kept the theme, got rid of all the extra stuff. So mellow. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the final episode of 2017 for the Dulce America video podcast. My name is Bing Futch. Thank you very much for joining me. You know, when I first started Dulce America back in January of 2007, I asked permission from two people who were doing podcasts online at the time on YouTube. I was Stephen Seifert and Robert Forrest. I didn't want to tread on their toes, you know. I wasn't sure about this whole starting a podcast in the dulcimer world thing. Little did I know that I'd be still doing this 10 years later, and next month will mark the beginning of our 11th season. And I want to thank every single one of you guys out there who has watched an episode, have talked to me about it, emailed me about how much they liked episodes. It has been one of the most amazing parts of my musical experience in this life, and I want to thank you all so very much. And so at the end of this year, Figured we'd take a look back over 10 years of episodes, 370 different episodes of Dulce America. That's kind of mind boggling, but I could have done more. Had some slow periods in there, but we picked it back up again. So now at the end of 2017, I present to you two top 10 lists, and we're gonna start off with the top 10 list of Dulce America episodes according to Google. This is by the analytics program that actually drives YouTube. Let's take a look. This turned out to be a very popular episode. This was shot at the Lee County Gathering in Lochapoca, Alabama. I'm not sure if it was because of the animals or if it was the old time music that made this so popular, but check out the stats. Debuting in April 28th, 43,853 minutes, 15,421 views, putting this at number 10 on the list. And uh, I'm actually going to be back there in the spring of 2018, if you're still seeing this. The legendary Don Petty was featured in this video. And of course, as we always do when we're together, we had a real good time. <laughs> Number nine comes all the way from the Cumberland Gap in Virginia for the uh, Cumberland Gap Music Festival. May 20th of 2008, 19,381 minutes viewed, 14,796 views. That was the first year of the event, and a lot of great people were there, including Mike Clemmer of Wooden Strings, and all kinds of folks joining in for the jam for a nice rustic camping setting. This is a lot of fun to shoot, and on top of that, which is funny to think about, this was my first time camping ever. And I camped right in the middle of a patch of poison ivy and somehow didn't touch a leaf. I tell you what. Number eight is a song study of the tune Loch Lomond. Debuted March 10th of 2011, 37,989 minutes, 17,297 views. Now you see sometimes the minutes and the view counts are lower than the one that preceded it. And sometimes there are other factors involved that'll push these to the top, like this one, number seven. 
This was actually a dulcimer... A Dulcimeric episode where I was just selling a couple of full craft dulcimers. Debuted in August 17, 2009, 45,580 yes, minutes, 17,598 views. And, uh, just look at the fingerboard. That's kind of crazy. Really, really gorgeous and sounds great. Contact me if you're interested in old hickory here. What else do we have? By the way, those oh. dulcimers are sold. Next, I've got this lovely walnut teardrop. The full craft teardrops have amazing volume. And lovely tone as well. Coming in at number six, according to Google, looking at the old Telford Inn, which is now closed. Debuting in January 23, 2008, 9,452 minutes, 18,182 views. Lots of guest stars in this video at the Sewanee Dulcimer Retreat at Stephen Foster Folk Culture Center State Park in White Springs, Florida. It might have been me trying to play a bagpipe. Another episode of the Dulce America Video Podcast. This is number 37, I think. Number five on the list, Black Mountain Rag. This one debuted October 25th, 2007. 37,989 minutes, 17,297 views. This was the first time I used the above view camera, which turned out to be very popular. Of course, my technique has improved over the years but many people say that their favorite videos are the ones that show the dulcimer as they see it, sitting on their lap. Coming in hot at number four was this episode on the blues using that overhead camera technique, April 2. 2010, 68,608 minutes, 22,124 views. This is part one of a two-part uh, thing, and uh, a lot of people didn't make it to the second part because the numbers do drop off very quickly. The box is going to encompass the fifth fret, the seventh fret. We're going to skip over the six and the six and a half fret, and at one point we're going to dip down on the middle string to the fourth fret. That's going to be the only note you play outside of the box. At number three, I have my reasons for imagining why this one has become so popular for the multi-finger method. It debuted April 7th, 2015, 150,192 minutes, 27,204 views. This is the technique that I use for most of my playing, and a lot of folks have requested that I do a, an episode on it. And when it hit, the numbers began to skyrocket. This one comes in at number three. Taking the number two position, this is a complicated story about when Northwest Airlines basically broke my instrument. July 11, 2009, 12,087 minutes, 36,812 views. It's complicated. There are two other versions of this video on YouTube and put together, there's a lot of things happening there for this little incident that had me end up on Jeopardy. To that one mangled mountain dulcimer. Add to that one mangled mountain dulcimer. And the number one video in the Dulce America canon, according to Google Analytics, was this one from the Florida Folk Festival. This, uh, this is called Promontory. This is off of my new album, Dulce America, Volume 3. September 6, 2015, 105,836 minutes, 52,863 views, ranking as the most popular Dulce America episode with music from The Last of the Mohicans. So there you have the top 10 list of Dulce America episodes according to Google Analytics. Now that's based on all the different traffic, viewership, how long people tuned in, uh, number of hits, that type of thing. But I know that there's another way of judging just how cool an episode is, and that's by you guys. So here it is now, the top 10 list of Dulce America episodes according to the fans. <laughs> Now. 
this episode debuted the week that Prince died. And it didn't go viral exactly, but it did really take off very quickly. Dulce America is often known for the many animal cameos. And in this one, you can see Sammy, the little cat that I rescued from the Gateway Dulcimer Festival. You know, it might be the song, but it also might be the set design. This one is just hilarious. I'm going to put the mic close. Roughly. All right, don't go to bed too soon tonight. (laughs) Some of you got meat you need to share. on stage with Steven Sievert is like being in an episode of Happy Days. It's really, really a lot of fun. And of course, we love the jam too. Funnily enough, Juke Joint Hen ends up as the subject of our number six video. This time I'm stalking the FedEx guy.
Well, there you have it, clock old hen, straight from the Appalachian Mountains down to a juke joint somewhere in lower Alabama. This concludes the second episode of the Dulce America video podcast. And now I'm going to sit out here and wait for the FedEx guy. Hey, it's the FedEx guy. He's looking at me like, what are you doing? Hey, don't go. <laughs> wait. <laughs> This is the only video to feature what my studio looked like before it was a studio. It was actually a carport. Now it's the same format, it's the same fret spacing, only different notes. This is one of the earliest Dulce America episodes, and it actually was a runner-up, like number 11 or number 12 according to Google teaching Hangman's Reel in three different keys. Very, very strange that this one ended up as number four. It might be because it's one of the loopiest episodes ever. Cool. I hope that picked up. That's just a very basic version of Wildwood Flower, a great dulcimer tune. More on that later, but right now I think my student has just shown up. I saw him around here somewhere. And then again, I could be completely imagining things. It's the top of my head on tour. <laughs> you guys asked for that one. Number three, very, very popular. Back to our G chord. Notice how I picked through that. I'm picking through it, so I'm making those notes pop out and make them a little bit louder than the chords that are supporting them, which is another trick to making sure that melody is king. Did you happen to notice the flashing mouse ears in the background there? Coming in at number two, what I still consider the finest musical experience of my entire existence from the ODPC Fun Fest in Everett, Michigan was this mammoth jam of 34 people from the ages of 6 to 86 jamming on Pink Floyd's Another Brick in the Wall Part 1, Part 2, and Part 3.
Billboard number one, believe it or not, another top 10 list. Number one is get a thicker pick. Number two is work with a metronome every single day. Look at this old fashioned thing. Number three is play a little bit every single day. Number four, tip for better playing in the new year is change your strings often. Number five is learn your mountain dulcimer fretboard. Come on, you bugger. Number seven, get a looper pedal. Number eight, join a dulcimer club or jam with others. Number nine, number nine, number nine. And finally, number 10, although we've sort of glanced upon it a little bit, I would say, I didn't want to scare anybody by coming right off the bat and saying it, but if you really want to improve your playing in the new year, go ahead and jump into learning music theory. And there you have it, my friends. That is a top 10 list of Dulce America episodes according to you, the fans. Thank you guys so much for sending in your emails and responding to the Facebook posts on that. Thank you uh, for watching all of these years. I had a lot of fun going back and seeing this stuff. So many things have changed, like YouTube only allowing us to upload 480p once upon a time and not more than 10 minutes. Remember those days? Maybe you don't. And also, just the production values changing, uh, the different lenses, different cameras being used, the backdrops, the techniques, and of course, the amazing amount of weight lost and gained. You can always tell when I'm on tour with Dulce America. If it's June, July, or August, because I start to pork out, man. Can't pass a Mexican restaurant when I'm on tour. I don't know what's up with that. So thank you guys again for watching for the past 10 years. And if you've just joined in, welcome. Have fun looking at all these episodes. Check out the Dulce America episode guide, which is your guide to getting through all 370 and counting episodes of this podcast. And starting the 11th season, we got a lot more fun coming your way. Also, I want to thank the companies that have endorsed me, and I endorse them, starting with Full Craft Instruments. They've been making me amazing mountain dulcimers ever since 2008, and I'm very, very proud to say that I represent Fullcraft Instruments out of Woodburn, Indiana. You can visit them online at fullcraft.com. I also want to thank VPix for working with me on developing the VPix Ultra Light Bing and Light Bing. You can get them at v-pix.com, and I want to thank Vinny and company for being there in Nashville, Tennessee, and making the most amazing picks on the planet. And I want to thank Zither Stand, Zither USA out of Texas, for providing me with this amazing stand that I use on stage and in the studio. It's elegant, it's beautiful, it doesn't bump up against the mountain dulcimer, and it's modular so you can change whatever kind of hold and grasp you want on there. You can hang wind instruments, string instruments, all kinds of stuff. That's Zither Stands, and they won Best of Show at NAMM Winter and Summer Show a couple of years back. Great stuff. Thank you guys for providing me with some really cool stuff. And last but certainly not least, I want to thank my patrons on Patreon. They've been helping to produce Dulce America ever since 2014, and I really, really appreciate you guys so much. You step up to the plate, you help me produce this stuff, and you've been responsible for so many of the upgrades and changes from the lights to the backdrops to all of this cool stuff that's been coming in, the software technology. It's all been because of you helping to make things better. And because of you, Dulce America continues to fly and soar into an 11th season. Again, thank you guys so much. If you want to find out more about Patreon, you can check out the website at patreon.com slash bingfutch. It's like a subscription service for my music, my books, and all kinds of video. So thank you very much for checking that link out and make sure you go over to the featured links area, featured tags area, and you'll see a tag that says open house, all kinds of free stuff for you to download there. Let me know what you think. So my friends, I'm going to see you next year with some brand new looks, some brand new stuff to teach and a lot more stuff to share. Happy new year, everybody. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Until next time, this is Bing Futch saying, play on baby. Play on. Thank you.